things are so fractured in how it is that people consume these days that, Stugat, you know I've been used as, for a long time, by Breitbart a long time ago, as a bit of a political weapon whenever I have opinion that black guy in sports likes to dance and we should let him after, you know, during celebrations. Fifteen years ago, I was surprised by sort of the Tea Party-ness of people coming and weaponizing my words again and again and turning this into a show that now many people uh, associate me with Lewokatard, that I have left ESPN and now I am the most of all the wokest sports people and woke goes broke and all of that stuff. And when you listen to the last segment, which I am assuming if you're in our audience, you're probably largely aligned with, hey, don't kiss a woman who doesn't want to be kissed and then not apologize when she says, please don't do that. Like it's a fairly simple, decent human thing that we don't have to turn into arguments that are viewed as political because men feel threatened or white men feel threatened or just the power feels threatened that if you keep saying equality, 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 this is what it's going to look and feel like. It's going to be women telling you, hey, don't do that. Here's where my boundary is. And you can just say, I'm sorry. You can just say, hey, I grew up in a Latin culture and we're kind of dopes about this. And my, you could just be sorry if someone says you've infringed upon my space. And I don't think that's woke. I just do appreciate when Ryan Clark <laughs> cares about his job, his profession, and hurting to his feelings enough that he just says it's okay for a media member to apologize. It's okay. You can do it the way Stephen A. Smith recently did it to Lonzo Ball, where you say he can't sit in a chair, and then he shows you sitting that again and again in a chair. He calls you out on that. And the engagement of that works for Stephen A. Smith. It's attention. That's not a bad thing, but Stephen A. Smith didn't apologize. He then said, you're not healthy. He said, I know you're doctors. You're not healthy. So the initial claim of you can't sit in a chair, Lonzo Ball reacts to it, gives you the engagement you want, gives you the attention, gives you the back and forth that you want. At this point, Stephen A. Smith is bigger than Lonzo Ball. He's more famous than most of the people that he's covering. You can just apologize, or you can move the goalposts and say you're not healthy, which is more accurate than you can't sit in a chair. Ryan Clark apologized. Stephen A. Smith did not apologize. Why is it so hard to just say I'm sorry in today's climate? Is it because you get rewarded for not saying I'm sorry? Is it because you don't leave yourself vulnerable? You put up your fists. You fight, quote unquote, like a man. You fight for the things that you're about. Does it cost you that much? The vulnerability of like, man, I just, I screwed up. I didn't know. My bad. Thank you for pointing that out for me. And not as a press release that you show in this recent press conference. You didn't actually mean that you were sorry. But why wouldn't you just mean that you're sorry? What's so hard about that? The decent thing to do. The Ryan Clark situation is different, though. That's just a, it's a joke that fell flat, and he apologized for a bad joke. Dan, this is serious, serious stuff here, okay? And so, you first off, do you think the apology is enough for her, okay? Well, You think also, she simply wants an apology? And secondly, he doesn't feel like he did anything wrong. That's the thing. He's yes. not sorry, very clearly. So he's not going to apologize. So even if he apologizes, what's but the point? But he did apologize. He but apologized. he doesn't mean it. Okay. I, but my point is, why can't you just mean it? Because you're like it's because he doesn't mean it. But he doesn't can't feel you, it. Why can't you just pretend like you mean no, it? Well, no, why <laughs> Which in that country would have been enough. I just don't. But understand. Dan, these are serious allegations. So he's defending himself, unlike Ryan Clark, who made a bad Sto joke. Stugatz, I mean, all, all I'm saying, I mean, serious allegations in that he would have to resign his job. But we saw what happened. That's not that's not a giant contract. Like my guess is, you if you were actually a decent person who wasn't flouting his power, who was actually genuinely sorry for having a blind spot or being uh, foolish about this, instead of an arrogant person who's clearly fighting to be right instead of just being morally kind like yeah you could fight for your job and protect your job at every turn but if a woman tells you i didn't want to be kissed by you in that spot don't most people listening to this wouldn't they just say yeah i probably shouldn't have done that got carried away emotion just won the world cup I, i'm sorry 
What's I so apologize. hard? But what's I so hard? What's so hard about that? Like, okay, you don't have to be sorry, but what's so hard about being sorry? Because you infringed upon someone else, they objected, and now you want to fight? Now you want to be a political crusader. Now you want to fight for man's right after he wins a championship to kiss whoever the he wants. Like, that's what you want to be? Okay. But, like, there's huge arrogance in that that comes from the power and privilege of the powered and privileged, and it descends into everything. And who gets trampled there? Women and minorities. And, and every, everybody who gets trampled there, as many men claim that they're oppressed because you're simply saying to them, hey, can we be equal? And the answer is no. The answer is I'm threatened by that. No, you can't be equal. I will kiss who I want. The answer is no. And I just don't know why we can't be sorry for that. I, re I really don't understand why men can't, re men, men can't raise their hand and just say, yeah, we, I mean, you, you gave us a lot of power and we're often dead. With it. I'm not I'm not going to do the myopic thing here, but the European way of doing things is ages behind what the Me Too mo movement brought along here several years ago where there was a very public reckoning. It if it hit Europe, it touched on it and people are so set in their ways. This is this is a part of the world in which in Italy, I know it's a different country in an apology for racist behavior towards its players, the league put together an art campaign where they painted the faces of monkeys in the colors of the crest of the leagues. This is, it is, it is bewildering when you apply American logic to this But it's, scandal. Mike, it's recent American logic. What's happening, and you do understand, right? Everyone listening to this does understand that that's what our women's team actually was oh. as a political symbol. This is where they were pioneers, and this is where they are leaders. And yes, the world caught up in soccer, not everywhere else. But you but know, that you, that, and that's what you know about. There, there, there was a team that I that I would really implore our audience to look up what the, the players of Magic Jack FC had to go through. Magic Jack, like Magic. the first ever VoIP phone, okay? Wow. The, 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 it, was a, it was a banner team in the league of the time, and the owner just moved the team to Boca Raton to play in an empty field in FAU. And I'm talking Hope Solo played for this team. Megan Rapino played for this team. Wombat played for this team. And he put them up in nice condos. And he made them scrimmage against his daughter's team. He didn't have a trainer on his team. He had a chiropractor. He would take someone who was bleeding from their broken nose to a chiropractor and in a full kit just fly him out to Atlantic City to party with him. And then force him to go to Mar-a-Lago for Easter. Like, this is, I know, this is not far removed. Hell, if the Joe Namath thing happened today with the Susie Colbert, uh, I want to kiss you incident, it would be viewed as a totally different thing. Back then, it was a source of comedy. Yeah, we knew it was inappropriate, but Joe Namath kept on living. He apologized and he moved on. I understand it's a recent thing, but our prism right now is so far removed from the one that is specifically in the sporting culture, too, which is if they're cavemen in Europe just generally. Imagine the sporting culture over there. But, Mike, this is what the war in our country is about, along that fault line of you're saying, think about Joe Namath a few years ago and how different we are. People don't want, men in power don't generally want the change that has come over the last 14 years that allows any man who gets drunk uh, to not kiss a woman and risk the, the consequences of losing his job no, no man in power making the rules wants to be subject to the idea of a woman or a minority or a gay person or someone else can take my job and my superiority, not my equality, by making a claim against me that might be false or overstated. That's why you get all these arguments whenever you have any of these rape conversations. You get all these, you get a whole bunch of cavemen defending the male viewpoint. The man has been in power for a long time, in, comfortable in power for in, a long time. They're so far away just from the men's game. And look at what uh, Vinicius has to deal with on a day, uh, game in, game out uh, scenario for Real Madrid. He's constantly battling racist abuse. And the La Liga president who is constantly asked to do something about this, repeated a racist slur in press conferences about it and asked, like, do you actually have any black people in the offices of La Liga to help you inform these decisions? I'm not going to tell you the number of black employees that we have. I've seen them around. We do. There, there is just a different culture over there. And hopefully, 
the, the pressure mounts so much and they turn the heat up so much and they threaten the things that they actually care about. Men's professional soccer over there, the club division and internationally, you're going to get penalized for the men's international competitions too. Hopefully the, the flames get so high that it's going to force a correction in behavior. But so far, they have navigated poorly. They have navigated every single one of these uh, controversies, and there have been several scores of them. Dan, I just want to be clear, because naturally an apology works if you actually mean what you're saying in the apology. But if you feel not, like not you, even always, because people can be so cynical that they say that no apology is good enough. But if you feel like you've done nothing wrong and you truly feel like that, I don't care what well, country he, we're he, in. I don't care. He, where he we, already apologized. Though, I Stugatsu. know, but okay. it was it was. But like, he did but do this it. Is, this like, isn't. You it, keep it, mentioning. It wasn't a hard. I was lying, I was lying when I apologized, but now yeah. I'm Sue, telling the truth. Sue, I just yes. want to clarify. These aren't alleg- We saw this. This played out in front of the eyes of the world. Uh, he was on Instagram he saying, "We're going to Ibiza, and I'm going to marry one of our players." Like this isn't. A he said, she said type of thing. He doesn't we get saw this. To, he doesn't get to decide, Stugatz, whether he's right no, he on gets this to or decide not. Whether or not it. He gets to decide whether or not he wants to defend himself and give a sincere, real apology. Uh, correct. I would just simply point out to you, and whatever the scandal of the day is and the noise of the day is, we love playing the sound of Sepp Blatter, the president of corrupt FIFA, saying, I am the president of everything. Uh, These people have been powerful for a long time. And what I will simply say to you about our women's national soccer team, whether people realize it or not, because they became a political tool as well, Megan Rapinoe being laughed at for ending a legendary pioneering career by missing a penalty kick and losing the World Cup. You do realize in this time somehow that these women are the equivalent of our modern Jackie Robinson, right? that we're living the history of empowering not just women in this country or girls in this country, all over the world to not have to tolerate it like that anymore. Like that, we are living right now in historic times for true legends in that fight. Now, the Sui nominee for best. I was the first one to jump. Call me first matey. Twins call me daddy. Like Sue got his babies. They demand a turkey and dance got the gravy. I've been on the craziest wave. If I'm on the stage, I'm just my minimum wage. This ain't Dan, <laughs> guess what time it is. I don't know what time it is. Game time. Who? Go sit in the penalty box. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Nobody was saying anything. I'm trying to help you here. Two get minutes for answering. Unbelievable. <laughs> Either say something Wait, Chris, to Chris is going to the penalty box. And Chris not is going Billy. to Billy. You called the foul on the wrong one, man. That's fine. You You're called five the wrong one. This, is, this wow. is professional wrestling. That happens sometimes. Let's Jeez. go to VAR. Yes. Uh, Billy, con- continue, please. I'm here trying to set up our award. That's our Oscars, some people say, guys. I don't know if you know this. Did you know that? It's time for another Suey category, Dan. Which and this one? one I think might be your favorite one yet. What day is today? Today is Tuesday. That's right. And today's Suey that we're going to so play right happy. now <laughs> is best back in my day. And now the most popular award of the ceremony, the Suey nominees for best back in my day. Allergies. As someone who's been <laughs> coughing nonstop for five years, I see so many doctors I earned a medical degree by osmosis. Allergies. Back in my day, we didn't have hypersensitive immune systems, and if we did, we didn't know it or care. Ignorance <laughs> was bliss. You ate a bag of peanuts at a ball game, had no idea why it made you itch and sneeze, and didn't give a crap because it tasted good. Now? I once got one of those credit card-sized bag of peanuts on a plane and read the label because it's what I do. Label said, warning, may contain peanuts. We're afraid of everything, (laughs) allergic to our own shadows. Now we're so worried we need organic food. Can't have gluten, please. Nelly Doogie used to say you have to eat a peck of dirt before you die. Forerunner to the five-second rule. A peck is about 256 ounces or two gallons. Imagine eating the contents of two empty gallons of milk filled with various kinds of dirt. I once drank two gallons of gluten straight. I was fine. That's not true. We did everything devil may care back in the day. Everything. Gigantic cars barreled down the highway before the advance of seatbelts. You smoked in the car, in restaurants, on planes, in bathrooms. Doctors smoked. Babysitters smoked. 
babies smoked. <laughs> Wild Bill Cody started giving me <laughs> sips of beer when I was 10, was... and look how I turned out. <laughs> content. We used to be content to just be. Now we are only content if our lives are producing content. Time was you'd be at the zoo having fun, and that was enough. Maybe you had a camera around your neck, but you wouldn't see the film for weeks till you had the role developed at Eckerd's. Now, everybody is taking <laughs> selfies they can admire instantly, one after another, ad nauseum. We only see the animals with our back to them as we pose. You know what the giraffe is thinking as we human tourists do that? The really? very existence. That's right. Really? That's what the giraffe really? is thinking. Yes. Uh, put it on Assholes. the poll, Juju. Does, it's a the, great question, does yeah. the giraffe think the people taking selfies are assholes? Letters. The handwritten letter that a postman hand delivers to your mailbox is all but dead nowadays. It's as dead as the letter sweater, which I last saw somebody wear when Archie and Jughead were banging around the halls of Riverdale High. Emails and texts, <laughs> boom, quick message and hit send, are the unindicted murderers of not only the handwritten letter, but of cursive penmanship itself. It's true. Which they used to teach in school. Ah, memories. Yes. <laughs> you laid a sheet of blank paper on a table. And for just that split second, you were Renoir, <laughs> poised before a bare canvas in the 1880s, a French field of chrysanthemums bidding your bonjour. <laughs> you lifted an ink pen and cradled it in your mitt and began the melodic, unhurried pace of cursive, flowing like a gently babbling brook. Cursive, what's that, Grandpa? snorts the preteen. Make that lad watch and see for himself as you roll back the decades and fashion a letter longhand. Give the page a crisp trifold, then tuck it into an envelope with the address in return, hand scrawled as well. Then the best part, carefully lick the gum to seal the back of the envelope, careful of a paper cut now, and do the same with the postage stamp. Go out of your way to eschew the envelopes and stamps with the peel-off stickers. If you're taking the time to send a handcrafted letter, buy gum, favor the recipient with a piece of you. Not only your handprints, but your DNA as well. Memberships. Just about every retail <laughs> business I deal with nowadays has some form of club or membership involved. It's unnecessary and annoying. Quit asking me if I'm in your rewards program. I don't need a reward. What am I, a dog? You're going to give me a little treat if I spend at least 20 bucks? I don't want a reward, and I don't want to accrue bonus points. All of a sudden, I can't just be a customer buying on my terms, buying what I want when I want. No, I'm apparently subscribing now, buying on your terms. You know, in the late 1940s, Groucho Marx resigned from the Friars <laughs> Club, and in his resignation letter famously wrote, I don't want to belong to any club that would accept me as one of its members. They used to say the customer is always right, now the customer is always screwed. Look, I'm a free agent customer. I'm out to spend, not be bought. Am I in your rewards program? Quit asking me that. It's all the reward I need. I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was back in my day. Salt and pepper shakers. Where did you go? Oh, twin sentries of the dinner table. You were always there, reliable and regally silent as the Queen's guard. Looking over the plates and cutlery as diners were seated at a restaurant. What happened? Walk into a restaurant nowadays, and you're more likely to find salt and pepper sitting at your table singing shoop than oh, you are to no. find a shaker of sodium chloride <laughs> alongside another offering of alkaloid piperine. Restaurant industry, I'm not asking for expensive Icelandic lava salt or blue Persian rock salt or even kosher salt. Just make available, please, a vessel containing your standard Morton's table salt so I might heroically rescue an underperforming steak when needed or spray a dust of those magic crystals to wake up some dozing asparagus. The first known salt shaker is traced to 1858 and credited to John Mason, yes, the Mason jar guy. S and Peep shakers were their revolutionary design of epic simplicity. They began a twin staple of restaurants and homes. Salt Bay may be an Instagram celebrity for its flourish in using salt, but our ability... <coughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <Okay>. Thank you. <laughs> what? I'm getting all choked up talking about salt. Yeah. Seeds. <laughs> Had a slice of watermelon lately? Popped a few grapes in your maw? Then you probably notice seeds are disappearing from fruit. 
And you probably see this as a good thing just because it makes life a little easier. We love us some convenience. In fact, it's a terrible thing, the deceiving of us. Symbolically alone, the seed is the king of life. Adam gave his to Eve, and here we are, if you believe the story. If they take the seed out of humans the way we have watermelons, we're all dead ducks. Oh, Beans, peas, <laughs> rice, coffee, corn, all seeds. Flour and oil started as seeds. <laughs> all hail seeds. So what the hell is happening? In exchange for convenience, we are not valuing the seed's impact on health, biodiversity, and our food system. Insist to your local grocer that you'll take your watermelon seeded, please, and the grapes too. I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was back in my day. Wallets. <laughs> you want a good laugh on Christmas morning or wherever presents are unwrapped? Hand a gift to someone under 30 and watch them open it to find a wallet inside. <laughs> the hesitation. The quizzical look. What is this mysterious bifold lump of leather, the look will say. You explain its purpose. Wait, what? They say. It holds actual photographs and old-timey cash money? Currently, the old trusted friend I have under my left cheek is a black guest brand trifold I've had since, I think, the late 80s. As an experiment, I checked the contents of my wallet to find a loan $20 bill, three credit cards, a debit card, a license, registration, and a AAA card. <laughs> cards from Home Depot, Duffy's, Panera Bread, and Barnes & Noble. A Marriott Rewards card valid through February 2015. Also, a medical insurance card, three business cards I never hand out, a voter registration card they never ask for anymore, and four photos, including my wife from around when we got married in the early 80s. Every self-respecting wallet it should have a hidden gem, an artifact. Mine, my original birth certificate from the mid-50s <laughs> with a childish signature that hasn't looked like mine since I was 12. Millennials, and especially the Gen Z crowd, they're too good for wallets. They're letting the tradition of our forebears wither on the vine as the wallet softly weeps. The cashless tap-and-pay generation with their sleek and slim card cases <laughs> and their photos stored in phones are slow murdering the iconic wallet, its cherished place gone from the derriere to the dumpster. Bring back the billfold. Start using cash again. Store credit cards you never use. Have photos developed at the drugstore. Save the wallet. I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was back in my day. Cars. I miss crank windows. Too many unnecessary conveniences now, cruise control. Please, I've got cruise control built in. It's called my right foot. It controls how fast the car goes. No button or steering wheel lever needed. Power steering. There's another one. Why do I want to give my power to the car? The power that I once had. The car is a ton of metal. I'm a damn college graduate. Seat settings at the push of a button for the love of God. My wife's car beeps at me when I get too close to the middle lane and automatically brakes if I get too close to the car in front of me. I can't even be a bad driver if I try. <laughs> I'm in a restaurant last week, and the guy I'm with starts his car remotely from the boot we're sitting in as we ask for the check. Sunroofs, moonroofs, panoramic roofs. How about you just get a damn convertible? Bluetooth, HD radio, satellite. I'll take AM, please, with Wolfman Jack talking through the static, and I'll crank the windows down so everybody can hear. I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was yes. back in my day. Yes. Wow. I don't know what's funniest there. Just how old all of it is. <laughs> old. Uh, how <laughs> wonderful it is. The comedic timing of you, a single word each time. How much pleasure he takes in hearing his own voice. Oh, my God. <laughs> Him running out of breath at every turn. Uh, Billy, what were your all your thoughts on what you just heard? It seemed like you were moved. I felt like I was at church, honestly. I mean, I don't know how you select a winner there because it's not even a contest. It's just stating... Statements of fact from Greg over <laughs> and you. over again. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. What are you proudest of there, Greg? You never know. <laughs> this is a new and unimproved Dan Levitar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings. Cody, how often do you find yourself feeling bad 
when a Noah Lyles says a thing that many people on social media probably did not even know who Noah Lyles was, perhaps, because they're not following track and field the way that they follow uh, basketball. And so he just got dunked on from every corner of the universe. How often do you feel bad for that person who says the dumb thing and then everyone gets to defend USA, USA, we're great at basketball, we invented basketball? Why asking Chris how he feels when someone says the dumb thing? <laughs> it feels very targeted It's an odd here. choice, yeah. I I'm was just, too dumb to pick up on it. I'm like, why is he going to me on this, yeah. Billy? <laughs> I, did you feel bad for Noah Lyles at all? No. He said a dumb thing. All yeah. right, let's listen to the dumb thing that he said that allowed all basketball players everywhere to make fun of him and get everyone chanting USA behind him because you fool. How dare you think anybody but the NBA plays the best basketball there is? World champion of what? <laughs> the United States? You know the thing that hurts me the most? is that I have to watch the NBA Finals and they have world champion on their head. World champion of what? <laughs> the United States? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I, I love the US at times, <laughs> but that ain't the world. <laughs> that is not the world. We are the world. We have almost every country out here fighting, thriving, putting on they flag to show that they are represented. There ain't no flags in the NBA. <laughs> World champion of what? <laughs> you guys tell me, because there wasn't anyone who defended his viewpoint. I thought, uh, I mean, you can, you can certainly make an argument that the world has caught up, but the world plays in the NBA. <laughs> Unless you think there's another... Uh, do you think there's another Donkic somewhere out there that isn't playing in the United States? That refuses States? to play in the <laughs> NBA? <laughs> <That isn't, laughs> no. I, I don't think there are a lot. I don't think there are a lot of those. But was there? what is the opposite viewpoint on this? Because I simply felt bad for him because everyone just dunked on him. Yeah. Am I gonna, I'm going to have to do this. You do it? He's, he's right. Ah, there he's, he's, he's not just technically right, but they do play basketball, professional basketball. That's – of a top level, and while you may dismiss, what, is Shane Lorkin going to beat us out in Turkey? You're not traveling to Turkey, so you don't know how it works. You, you and in and in other... You, you know. No, 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 I don't know. team is not going to beat the NBA champion. No, I don't know. No, you but, know. No, I don't know, because I haven't actually seen it happen. I haven't seen an NBA team travel to play a, a series of, uh, uh, of games, and... Yes, well, we're laughing about it. Ha ha ha! They can't stand. You know. They don't stand a chance against the NBA. But you we, know, we haven't actually seen it happen, and it's the same kind of bravado that we applied to international basketball, and we saw international basketball. So yeah, maybe the first couple of times, say hypothetically, they do what we have in soccer, where you actually can find a world champion, because not just do you have their own domestic league champions. When someone wins the English Premier League, they don't call themselves world champion. And that's essentially what we're doing here in the United States. We're taking the most well-known league and dubbing them world champion when they don't do that in soccer. Oh, I get to be an English champion. You know what my next step is? I get to go to Champions League, and I get to call myself a champion of Europe. And then after I'm a champion of Europe, I get to go to something called the Club World Cup, where then they crown a true world champion. So technically, he's USA, right. USA! 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 Toronto not part of the world? It is a national championship. Yeah. It is a national championship. No, they're beating Canadian team. But that's like saying you don't know that they're going to beat the Tamiami Colts 11 and under team because they never played the Denver Nuggets. You asked if there's another Donkic out there. Where do, you, where do you think Luka played before he came to the NBA? He played at Real Madrid. Yeah, but Mike, the champion plays here. Jokic is from another con uh, country. He came here to play because he wanted to play against the best. Yeah, and I'm not even saying that the U.S. wouldn't win, especially in the early USA. goings. But if you USA, if you, USA, USA, but if you USA, go USA, if you actually have, USA. if you actually have an international competition, it's called the Olympics, and U.S. wins all the time. No, they USA. But we send them. They don't win. USA. USA. They don't win all the time. USA. They're not going to win this time. 
Just to be clear, because uh, I understand that all media members need to age. You have been taking a lot of paths, uh, trying to be an insider, being a mover and shaker, a legitimate movie executive and media uh, hobnobber. Uh, you just to be clear in the debate age, you have said uh, I'm just I want to quote you properly that all of these NBA players who are laughing today saying, how could you possibly say that the United States and the NBA isn't the best league in the world? Your counter is, but come play Shane Larkin in Turkey. Right. <laughs> Eventually. And yeah, over time, it may be embarrassing at the start, but what over a great take. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, you want Shane Larkin in Turkey? <laughs> All right, let me ask you a question. If you do this in baseball, there's a reason he went to Turkey. Let me ask you a question. If you do this in baseball, how certain are you? I am not. Not in baseball. Baseball's baseball a different sport, sport though, yeah, right? Different yeah. sport. Yeah, it's, it's a college team in the in the yeah, spring training yeah, can beat a pro team sometimes. It's a it's a but you have to start somewhere. And if you don't actually have the competition to where Europe can identify whatever this perceived golf is, it might be not. It might. It's an actual golf. But over time, that golf will shrink That's because it'll make them more competitive. Well, you're essentially making the argument on behalf of the group of five for college football. Right. Like that's the closest comparison that we have where we've had this debate before where it's, oh, can these teams that don't have the same level of funding that shouldn't theoretically have the same level of athletes that don't have the same level of preparation? Can they compete with these big monster programs? No. And the argument <laughs> had been yes from a lot of people. And Mike, you're actually making that argument really well right now. It's true that Japan just beat the United States in the World Baseball Classic. It's true that you could make an argument that internationally the hockey is just as good as it is in the United States and Canada. You could make an argument for sure, it's a certainty, that the MLS champion is not the best team in the world. You could even... But but the NBA is the one sport where you cannot make an argument. Football. What about football? Well, American football because there really are incomparable leagues. But yes, I'll. I'll I, I didn't even consider football yeah. because it's pretty much still. An but you but you yourself are conceding that all the other major leagues here in the United States would actually run into legitimate competition. Yes, but but we NBA, laugh it off in the NBA. Well, and we should. And, and that's why it's weird that Noah Lyles is picking the NBA to, to stake his claim because I, that's the one league where there is no question that the NBA champion is the best team in the world. But but Mike, not, Mike is not, so not sure. wrong when he says that we have seen our dream teams go play internationally by international rules and lose because they're not as good at that style. Like, it's not Now like imagine if they played Shane Larkin. That's the thing. Uh, yeah. That's the thing. If all of a sudden, can you imagine if that Barkley MJ team had to deal with Shane Larkin in yeah. Turkey? Well, where did who is the number one pick in the NBA this year? Where was he playing? Where's he playing now? I understand where he's playing right now. But you want to dismiss play in the NBA yet. But you want to dismiss these are these are teams that play well drilled basketball to just laugh off and say well, but they're the superior athletes of America, and it sounds ridiculous that they would travel to Turkey and lose uh, to to Shane Larkin. I'm mean, like <laughs> saying, but they have certain ways that they play that are fortified. You don't and believe that the Denver Nuggets are going to lose to a Turkish league team not in led your, by Shane Larkin. Not you in, don't believe <laughs> that. Do you think Shane Larkin wishes he was in the NBA? Yeah. Of course. Why? Well, he's American, and... He, he's had a lot of success well, that, over no, there No, but in that Europe, entire but Turkish team would probably take a All game. of them. Yeah. Yes. I, you, you have they the, would bail on Shane see, here, Here's the thing. You, you guys are taking the easy side of the argument, and I'm even conceding to you that early on probably the U.S. Uh, or the NBA asserts its will. But it, but this is just an NBA-centric thing, too, because if we did it in the WNBA, I imagine the, the European teams would beat WNBA teams. So what I'm saying is if you don't actually have the competition to – set forth what the gulf is you're not giving europe any chance to actually USA, make it USA, USA USA it's just USA, silly to laugh USA. at him you it, sound like a fool he look, sounds like a fool god bless america somebody get me an american flag it's, it's going to turn into with, uh, the slim reaper what's on un, what's unfair is this is going to I turn have into Shane Larkin on <laughs> yeah it's already happened well, this is going to turn into mike says shane Larkin can beat Jokic, and that's not that's what, what i'm saying no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we don't know what would happen. We can assume what would happen. Shane Larkin but knows over what would happen. But over time, those are not bad teams that play in Europe. Like the, Barcelona is not a bad team. Real Madrid, aren't, they, these aren't bad basketball programs. Mike, I appreciate your bravery. 
<laughs> in the face of Noah Lyles being an internet joke that I began this segment by asking Chris Cody. Why me? I still don't know why. Did you feel bad for someone just in the face of public scorn being laughed at from every corner of the internet for an invalid sports opinion? And you took up its cause. You wrapped yourself in the flag and Shane Larkin. A Turkish and, flag. And a Turkish flag. For some reason. Yeah, well, it's just yeah, an they, example. And guys are Michael not going to let me forgive. Yeah. You're USA. not going to forgive the Shane Larkin. USA. <laughs> USA. What I'm saying, USA. you've made Noah Lyles a joke USA. when he is 100% USA. right. You made Shane Larkin USA. Michael Jordan. <laughs> Mike's gonna no, that was Michael Petrus. Mike's going to oh, start yeah. a let's go turkey chant. <laughs> Just, Why did you make it Turkey? And uh, just why? Well, because uh, Shane Larkin played. It, does he still actively Turkey. play in Turkey? He might play Let's in Greece. Let's go Turkey. Let's go Turkey. Hey, Carrie. What? The, you're no, seeing no, the boop. seeds of okay. stuff. Like the the Antetokounmpo yesterday, or yesterday, I saw a story of Antetokounmpo. Greece, Greece would kick everyone's ass if he played for them. Well, that's the thing. If you actually have this competition, you have these international players say, "I don't have to." I don't have to travel now to play in the top flight. If I have an opportunity to call myself a world champion, I'm Luka Doncic. I'm way more comfortable in Spain than I would be in Dallas, Texas. Well, you have Let that in the say, Olympics. But you have you, that in the Olympics. You have that in the Olympics, and the U.S. doesn't win all the time. You, you would probably have it if you had an NBA franchise in play Greece. Play by the NBA rules. If you had an NBA franchise in Greece, that's I imagine Antetokounmpo would want to play for but them. But that's the thing. Uh, Billy, you're, you're absolutely right. You nuke Mike Ryan's 100% argument saying, no, you know what? We play American games in America by America's rules. Damn right. Then what do you have, Shane Imagine Larkin? Imagine if we brought soccer over here we started playing with our hands. They American like rules. That allows everybody in the NBA to dunk on poor Noah Lyles and everyone on the internet because Draymond Green and Bam and everyone else – you fool. USA. You USA. Fool. USA. <laughs> Turkey. USA. It's strange. Greece. It's strange that Shane Larkin would have been your go-to there, and you're arguing I'm 100% right. Well, he is. I mean, Noah Lyles is right. They, 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 they have Toronto. That's the one team that they have outside of the United States. If they open this abroad, you'd have players less likely to leave to the NBA knowing that they had a chance to compete against the best. Larkin averaged 10 points per game in Turkey. He's a naturalized citizen. He's an icon over there. <laughs> He's an icon.